Good afternoon all. Today I thought I'd have a look at this, which is a web portal into the solar output that's coming from my Solis inverter. So I've got solar panels on the roof of my house, 3.8 kilowatts, and I've got an inverter, which is 3.6 kilowatts. Now it's not putting out 3.6 kilowatts right now. Uh, you can see their installed capacity is 3.6 kilowatts peak but it's only putting out 250 watts because it's a fairly cloudy day. Now this is the curve for today. It's about 2 p.m. and we haven't done terribly well. The peak there was uh, 1.54 kilowatts. So it's well under what you'd get on a perfectly sunny day. So what do you get on a perfectly sunny day? Well, of course, it depends whether it's a perfectly sunny summer day or winter day. Now this is really the only perfect sunny day curve that I've got in about nine months of ownership of this solar power system. And you can see that there's barely a notch in it. So there wasn't a cloud in the sky. What's interesting though is that the peak power is well below 3.6 kilowatts. In fact it's under 3.2 kilowatts and the reason for that is that when solar panels get warm and this was presumably a warm day it was the 17th of July 2021 there the voltage on each cell drops and therefore at a fixed current uh, the overall power drops this thing keeps refreshing for whatever reason so yeah, you don't get um, the full 3.6 kilowatts, which is rather disappointing because there's 3.8 kilowatts of solar panels, a 3.6 kilowatt inverter, and on this warm sunny day, I only managed to get just under 3.2 kilowatts peak of solar. But there was a good yield this day. It was 25 kilowatt hours. So what does a perfectly sunny winter's day look like? This day was a perfect no cloud sun. Strangely, it was exactly six months later on the 17th of January this year, 2022. And you can see that the peak power is well down on the summer perfect sunny day because of course the sun is much lower in the sky. So peak power was 2.47 kilowatts. Um, across winter you don't get the 3.6 kilowatts you're never going to get that because the sun's too low um, it's a much less wide curve uh, it started here at about 9 a.m and just after 4 p.m 10 past 4 it crashed down to absolutely nothing but what's this curious bite mark here that seems to have eaten a big chunk of uh, total yield kilowatt hours what's eaten that away well let's take a look at a short video i made the other day it's 10 45 a.m and you can just see the shadow of the tv aerial on the bottom left of the solar panels there's the neighbor's chimney and his aerial is casting a, pa a shadow and now it's um, about 12 45 just coming out to one o'clock I suppose and you can see that the shadow of the neighbor's chimney is just and more specifically the TV aerial is just gonna clear the panels now and so that explains the bite mark in the perfect solar curve so starting at about 10 30 a.m. And going on till about 13.30, 1.30 p.m., that TV aerial cuts away, I don't know, a kilowatt hour, maybe a bit more of total energy out of my solar yield because of my neighbor's TV aerial. Now, so far, both in the winter curve which, like I say, starts at about 9 a.m., ends just after 4 p.m. And in the summer curve, which gets going properly about 8 a.m. and actually doesn't hit the deck until 
Ooh, 8.30 p.m., uh, 8.30 in the evening. On either of those, neither of those curves do we see the 3.6 kilowatts that the inverter can theoretically produce uh, from the 3.8 kilowatts of solar panels on the roof. However, you can see that 3.6 kilowatts, and there it is. On this curve, now this is a little bit earlier in the year, this was May the 6th, and you can see what should have been a perfect sunny day, which may have yielded, if it weren't for the limit on the inverter, the 3.8 kilowatts theoretical peak of the solar panels. And there's the inverter actually creating a flat top to this curve, because it can only put out 3.6 kilowatts, it's actually limited to that amount of output. I think you get 3.61 occasionally, but there's the inverter limit creating a flat top on this curve. So why on this particular day was the inverter able to hit this 3.6 kilowatts peak and hold it? Well, probably because this was a cooler day. This was May the 6th, 2021, and the solar panels were probably just a lot cooler. Also, the other thing that ha tends to happen here is that when you get these gaps, which is where cloud passes over the solar panels, they cool down. So then when the sun comes out, you do get the full 3.6 kilowatt yield, theoretically slightly more than that if the inverter allowed for it, which is the peak output power of these solar panels. Now, here's a curve from September the 27th which is not far from the equinox. And you can see here that the system is still capable of producing 3.6 kilowatts, and the top has been flattened off. So that is the limitation created by the inverter. But this is a much narrower curve than the summer curve. Um, it's just able to maintain that 3.6 kilowatts peak but it's probably one of the last days in the year where it gets to that peak. This, this peak, of course, is helped by the fact that there were large periods where there were clouds, so the panels had a chance to cool down. So here we have a, just a little bit of sustained peak at that 3.6 kilowatts, but later in the year, of course, that can't happen because the sun's too low in the sky. So here, for example, this is about a month later. It's the 20th of October, there is a peak here at, well, it's not 3.6 kilowatts, it's 3.44. And that appears to be the top, that's 3.42. So by this point in the year, the system simply cannot generate 3.6 kilowatts. And bear in mind that I'm cherry picking these curves, of course. I mean, if I go to the next day, oh, <laughs> Well, there's a much sunnier day, but that's only 3.2 kilowatts. And then the next day, oh, now what's that? Oh, there's 3.63 kilowatts. So yes, on the 22nd of uh, October, it, it did actually manage to yield very briefly uh, 3.6 kilowatts. But then you get days which are terrible like this, a peak of 880 watts, uh, back to a, a relatively sunny day, but under 3 kilowatts. And so it goes on. Oh, we've got some peaks there at 3.5 kilowatts. So th at this time in the year, it's just capable of producing the maximum power, but it has to be a very specific day. So what's the best output in November? Well, not surprisingly, perhaps it was the first day of November. November the 1st, the peak there is 3.1 kilowatts. And as we go through November, peaked under 3 kilowatts, uh, two and a half. Uh, that's barely over 600 watts. And the cloudy days, of course, aren't anything like as good as the sunny days, two and a half kilowatts, barely over 1.5 on the 8th. So what was the best day in December? Well, it's actually this one. It's the 28th of December. The peak is 2.24 kilowatts, well below the uh, 3.6 kilowatts that the Solis inverter can produce. And uh, the peak in January was this day, the 5th of January, reasonably sunny day. You can see the bite 
there, the bite mark where the neighbor's TV aerial, of course, cuts the peak down or cuts the curve down. The peak here was 2.52 kilowatts in January. Now, what's the worst day of solar power I've seen? Well, this one was pretty bad. It's not actually the worst. I'll come to that. But you can see here that the peak was just 60 watts. But what's all this switching on and off thing here between 0 watts and 20 watts? Well, the inverter can only produce a minimum of 20 watts. Anything less than that, and it just shuts down. So what it tends to do is the, the input capacitors fill up. It thinks, oh, there's some solar power. I'll start generating the minimum I can, which is 20 watts. Those capacitors then discharge, and the inverter says, no, I can't keep that up. I'm dropping to 20 watts. And you can actually hear on the inverter a relay clicking in and out. And very often in the morning, it clicks in and out several times. Then there's enough light to sustain the minimum 20 watts. On this day, the 24th of November, it briefly got up to 60 watts, but then fell back again to this shoulder of 20 watts. The relay clicks in and out, and it eventually drops down to zero, of course, when it gets dark. But the absolute worst day I've seen was quite recently, actually. It was the 25th of January, 2022. And we got the relay clicking in and out at the beginning of the day just managing 20 watts uh, periodically. Then it held 20 watts. And then in the middle of the day, now my house doesn't face um, completely due south. The roof is slightly west of south. So it's always after midday when you get the peak. But there's the peak. Yes, 30 watts. 30 watts for a few minutes. Drop back down to 20 watts. And then the relay clicks in and out. And that's the end of the solar day. And the very next day, the 26th of January, it was a little bit brighter, quite a lot brighter actually, and uh, the system peaked at 2.6 kilowatts, which uh, is a damn sight better than 30 watts. Now, just moving forward, um, 27th, 28th Jan, 29th, and we get into February. This was, uh, oh, that's the 31st of January peaked at 2.77 kilowatts. So as we uh, head into February, the peak power available is creeping up noticeably. Um, this is the 1st of Feb, which is actually yesterday, 2.94 kilowatts. So we're just at the point where the system is capable of breaking back through that uh, 3 kilowatt. Uh, and this is today, of course, and it's uh, now dropping off because it's... Uh, getting later in the afternoon, and the light's fading. Um, this photo here isn't actually my roof, it's just a generic photo of some solar panels, but this appears to be the date that the system was installed, the 16th of April 2021. Um, if you're interested in what this curve is down the bottom here, um, this is interesting. Solis have recently added this to the portal, and what it is, it's the Agile Import and Output um, graphs showing the price of energy every half an hour. And at the moment, because energy prices are so expensive, the price that you can buy energy, um, this is from Octopus Energy, it says here data from octopus.energy, is capped at this 35p per kilowatt hour. But this blue curve is interesting for me because I've recently signed up for the Octopus outgoing Agile tariff, which means that no longer am I being paid three pence per kilowatt hour for energy that I send out to the grid. Um, I'm actually being paid whatever this graph is sitting at. So at certain times in the day, and this is typically the early evening, uh, that's showing, what is it, 30.9, so 31p peak at, I mean, I can't actually generate electricity with the solar panels at 6 p.m. in the evening because it's dark, so I won't get that 30p. But I might, if prices, the outgoing prices stay this high, as we move into the spring and pass through, of course, the uh, spring equinox where it starts to get lighter uh, each day and much more quickly. So I'm certainly looking forward to seeing how much um, I can get per kilowatt hour of export. 
based on this uh, set of agile prices. So there we are. That was a little look at the solar output from my uh, rooftop solar panels and Solis inverter on a lovely warm summer's day. Hard to remember quite how that feels at the moment. And a correspondingly perfectly sunny cold winter's day, complete with neighbours TV aerial interrupting my solar production. And how bad solar can get on the darkest of dingy uh, winter days. I, th I think this was a bit uh, foggy, actually. It was certainly very heavily overcast, grey. The air was extremely damp. It was just one of those really horrible days. And so here's looking forward to more of this sort of thing. This is actually the second day that I got the Wi-Fi dongle working on the Solis inverter a few days after the system was installed. Uh, so it's a pretty good day. It's actually back in April the 19th. The very first day was April the 18th. And this is where I got the dongle uh, up and running. And you can see that day I actually had the 3.6 kilowatts flat top. So those are some solar curves. Cheerio.